finding people who uh, who want to help you, you know, I I just can't help but think, you know, all the people who take their time to to come into our studio, talk with all, talk with you out there, and, and really just give advice. I mean, I, I think that is a self reward in itself, which is why people keep showing up and uh, and giving you guys all the advice, that, everything we know. We lay it on the table, and I, you know, I, I I think it's an attestment to the people who are on this show. Literally, just as we're a bunch of givers, come find us. We are here to give you guys all the advice you want. Um, Boyce Goff joins us, and uh, you know everybody can use a little bit more tax advice, right? <laughs> I, I think that's true. Just about everybody I've met could use four. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's why they come find they'll you, find Boyce. You, yes. <laughs> so you know, uh, you know, you've, you've GDC Financial Solutions. It's a you know growing firm. You've you've kind of run the gamut. You've been on the IRS side. You've you've done the huge company thing. Right. I've been the controller of uh, two large corporations. I've been the... Uh... <laughs> Have you played any music in the middle of your discussion before? No, but we're going to an ad. No. Uh, and Thanks then for joining us. <laughs> I've been the manager or the managing partner of a large CPA firm here in Bellevue and sold that back in the uh, 2003 and started more of a boutique financial planning and tax planning firm where we can actually do a holistic approach to our clients. So that we can look at everything that they're doing, so it's all in one location. So we don't get any conflicts, which is good. Which is excellent, in it's my opinion. Better than what's going on downtown right now. Do you know what's going on downtown? I boys? haven't paid attention. I go in. There's I go riots. to riots. Oh, are they? Yeah, there's riots downtown. Oh, right May first riots. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And speaking of May first, happy birthday to my dad. That's right. It's totally off the wall. Okay. Anyway, so <laughs> was it a riot when he was? Born? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have a riot of a party later. But that's a okay. you know, I'll I'll get you some details later. Mm-hmm. So you know, you work in in tax planning. It's kind of a cohesive venture with financial planning, and a lot of people don't see it that way. And I think it's important when when we start talking about tax savings for 2012. A lot of this has to do with understanding how to reduce them and save some of this money. And a lot of it is in a kind of financial planning type of way. Well, and that's right. I mean, we can go out and we can develop deductions on your tax return where you can go out and spend more money, buy more assets, and uh, do that kind of stuff. But, you know, in the end, what have you got in your pocket? Uh, the main thing is, is can we do financial or tax planning coupled with financial planning so that when we're all done – that money that you're getting the deduction for on your tax return stays in your pocket. For IRAs, 401k plans, retirement plans, uh, long-term care policies, um, H- uh, HSA, uh, health savings accounts, uh, things like that, that you can turn around and put that money in your pocket. The way to educate your kids, uh, you got a business, put your kids to work for you. As long as you pay them less than $5,970 a year, they don't pay any income taxes on that. I tell my clients, fine, tell your child that we're going to take three-quarters of that money and we're going to put it in your college savings account. But you, as an owner, get the deduction for that kid's pay. So, you know, you basically have them do housework. Like a, it's a great way of doing – or are we, st- are we talking more about stamping mailers? <laughs> they have to work in the business. Oh, okay. In, in other words, they can't go out and mow the lawn and have you uh, deducted on your corporate tax return. No, you have them work in the business, uh, but, you know, have a job description. You have to have a job description, and they have to be doing it. This isn't what we call free gratis, and it's also an opportunity of a way to train your children how to work. And, uh, you know, have them do things like handle the mail, uh, filing, uh, doing emails. Uh, some clients have got uh, kids that are really sharp, and they have them do websites and things like that for them. Others, Build a uh, Facebook page. Or the Facebook page. I mean, that's very important. I mean, in some of the social media, that's very important mm-hmm. today. And quite frankly, I can tell you that the kids are a lot better at it than we at my age bracket. I mean, I had my granddaughter over. She was, uh, what, a year and a half old. I got up one morning, came out, and she already had the iPad out there. Oh, and she's playing yeah, games they, on it. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I'm going, wait a minute. <laughs> my son, he literally is playing with the iPad. Right. Um, so, you know, when, and so when you have kids, that actually does give you uh, the ability to save some more money if you do it right, mm-hmm. um, not only by hiring them. Well, the, the thing about it is, is first of all, that money comes off your tax return, you know, from your business. So that's money that you don't have to report on your tax return. So that's $5,970, okay? Now that comes onto the child's return, and they don't pay any income taxes on that at all. Now, if you're in a corporation or a partnership, you have to pay the payroll taxes on it, but you don't have to do the withholding. If you're in a sole proprietorship, you don't have to pay any of that. They just, you know, you give them a W-2 and they, they pay their uh, 
$5,900. And I mean, they put their $5,900 on their tax return and it's free. Now, if you wanted to set them up with an IRA, you could add another 5000 to it. There's probably a lot more education that goes on there and a sense of financial self mm-hmm. with a child than maybe just giving them you know, allowance. But you set them up in a real work environment, get collecting a real paycheck, understanding a real tax return. And, I mean, of course, if they're of age to actually do some of these jobs, which mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe they have to be 13, 14 years old. Maybe they have to be 16. I don't know the child labor laws. But. No, in your own business, they can work for you. But you have to make sure that they're doing something that's useful, and you have to have a job description for them. I mean, kids that are 10, 12, 15 years old can go and empty the trash and do the mailings and things like that. One of the things I used to do uh, <clears throat> when I had a large firm and my kids were much younger, I would bring home all of the invoicing that needed to be checks that needed to be mailed and you know licked and stamped and everything else. And I'd bring that, bring that home for them, and they'd go through and do it. And then you uh, get a couple hours of quiet when you get home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was really good for them. And, <laughs> and you. Yeah. Well, one of the things I'll tell you, one of the things that also helped, uh, one year uh, my wife sat down and she was having, the kids were still, I mean, they were in their 15, 16-year-old bracket, and they were still trying to understand, you know, Mom, did you bring any more 20s home from the from the uh, cash teller machine? And... Um, so one day my wife sat down with our middle daughter and said, here, you pay the bills for the month. Boy, at the end of that month, Anna sat down and said, I didn't realize what it cost to run a home. She's now in the, you know, she's very active in a business, uh, had a compensation for a big computer firm. <laughs> so <laughs> she learned a lesson and she's done very well. So outside of hiring your kids, you know, what are some other ways people can, you know, work with their tax planner, their accountant, um, to reduce taxes in 2012? Well, again, as we said, you know, 401k plans. The other side of it is if you've got your own business, uh, you need to be looking at what expenses are you incurring in that business. Uh, do you have a car? Are you keeping a log, an auto log for that car and being able to write that off? Because right now, the if I remember correctly, the mileage rate is like 50 cents a mile. That's pretty good. So if you drove 10,000 miles in your car mm-hmm. for business... That's five grand. Now, five grand in a 28% tax bracket, that's $1,250 less on your tax return. That just helped pay for the gas on your car. What, what position do people have to be in when they, to, in order to use their car as a deduction? Well, first of all, you have to be in a position that requires you to be using the car. Okay. So some of the normal things would be real estate agents, insurance agents, uh, uh, people who are using their, you know, construction people, things like that. Uh, anybody who's having to use their car in the business. Mortgage uh, mortgage guys, if you're having to go out to the client's office and sit down with them and do it, that mileage from your office to their office and back is deductible. Is it almost anybody in sales, regardless of maybe if they're co- full commission or I mean, if they have some commission, is it pretty much anybody who's in sales that has to drive around and, er, and meet with people? Anybody who has to use their car in business is eligible to take the mileage deduction, but... You need to make sure that you keep an accurate daily log because that's one of the things the IRS will look for. Inside of a corporation, it's a little bit different, but it's basically the same. You need to justify how you're using the car in business. Okay? Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, that, it's interesting because I don't know if a lot of people know that. Well, I don't think a lot of people want to take the time because they look at it and say, oh, this is a real bother because sitting down and recording your mileage can get it to be a real pain in the neck. But, you know, one of the things I used to do is I'd go to the office, I'd write down my mileage the first of the day, and at the end of the day when I got home, I'd subtract the mileage coming home and r- write down the mileage. I that think, was. I think there's an app for it now. Is there? I, I do. I'm I sure think, there is. I think there is an app that will actually track. You just click it on and click it, it off, off, and it'll it'll tell you your business mileage. Well, you know, that's you know maybe I, sh- maybe I missed the point here in this whole accounting business. Maybe I should have apps for all of these you things. You know, <laughs> if you only invented Angry Birds, you wouldn't have to worry about it, would you? <laughs> Uh, we're here with Boyce Goff, CPA and owner of GDC Financial Solutions. Boyce, we just have a couple of minutes left before we have to go to break. But um, you know, outside of your bi- outside of your car, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people have home offices. Right. A lot of people are working from home. Right. I mean, that's where you see a lot of people who in business for themselves, um, commissioned people, and things like that that don't have an office per se at the company. Um, and are doing their books and everything, they're doing their uh, whatever, and they have an office at home and doing it. Um, at that point, you can take that deduction for that office in the home. The square footage divided over the total square footage, by the total square footage of the house, 
times the indirect expenses and direct expenses for that office. And then it goes off it goes off against your Schedule C or against on Schedule A for your itemized deductions. And so it's a great way, and it's totally 100% above board, and it's a great way to take some of those expenses that you would normally have to pay self-employment taxes on and get a better deduction by moving them on what we call above the line. I th- is that like above the table? No. <laughs> We don't do anything under the okay. table. <laughs> no, above the line, that means it goes above AGI. It goes into uh, the actual business deduction and not on itemized deductions. Got it. I, was, okay. I just want to make sure we're talking no, about No, we don't do anything under thing. the table. You know the difference between tax avoidance and tax, uh, let's see, tax avoidance and, and tax evasion? What's that? 10 to 20 years. Yeah, no kidding. Well, boys, <laughs> boys, thanks so much for joining us again. Boys Goff uh, of GDC Financial Solutions. Uh, when we come back, you know, the sky's a little gray out there, but do you know what the gray means when it, when you look at it and, and understand the different colors that are out there? You're going to learn all sorts about the colors and the meanings from Kathy Bannock when we come back. My name is Ben Brasher, and you're listening to Brasher Nomics. <laughs> 